Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solve a reverse Polish notation equation uh, using JavaScript. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with reverse Polish notation, uh, it's also known as postfix notation. And what it is, is it's an expression where uh, the operators uh, follow the operands. Instead of, uh, instead of having operand, operator, operand, it's more like uh, operand, operand, operator. Uh, so it, that's uh, the alternative to uh, infix notation. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna, I've gone ahead and I've created a new directory on my desktop called Math Solver and I've opened it in my text editor. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create two files for this project. We need to create an index.html file. Uh, we also need to create an app.js file. So let's go ahead and make the, the, the basic uh, template for our HTML file. All right, and we know that we're going to be using the app.js, so we're going to include that. And we are going to make an empty script tag uh, for experimentation shortly. So um, the good thing about a problem like this is it is an excellent interview question. Uh, so if you are interviewing for a position, uh, it doesn't have to be for JavaScript. I've just chosen JavaScript out of one of the many existing programming languages. Uh, but there is a good shot that, that someone could ask you this question during the interview process. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up our app.js file. Uh, and we are going to create a class called math solver. So function math solver. And we are going to do the following here. We are going to say uh, this.solve postfix. And it is a function that accepts a postfix expression. So before we begin, uh, we do have to create a uh, prototype for strings for checking to see if strings are numeric. Uh, if you've been keeping up with my tutorials, you've probably seen this before. Uh, but we do need this uh, because it doesn't already exist in JavaScript as a function. So let's go ahead and do the following. String dot prototype dot is numeric. And we're gonna say this. It's not is non. All right, so uh, this will actually return uh, true if the value of the string is a numeric, otherwise it'll return false. So with that said, we can start doing our uh, algorithm. So just a, just a basic um, summary of what we're gonna be doing here is we are going to be uh, looping through all uh, tokens of this postfix string uh, if the token is numeric, then we're going to add it to a stack. Uh, if it's an operator, then we're going to pop uh, the last two items from the stack and calculate uh, a, a value based on the operator. And then we're going to push it back into the stack. And we're going to repeat this cycle until there's only one value in the stack, which is our solution. So let's go ahead and do the following here. We're going to say uh, var result stack equals empty array. And then we're gonna say postfix equals postfix dot split. And we're gonna split it by spaces because we're gonna trust that the string that we're passing in is separated uh, by space and it all looks like a perfectly formatted string. Uh, so it's not gonna be questionable in this case. So the next thing that we wanna do is we want to loop through uh, each of the postfix characters. All 
All right. So we we know how how long of our how our string is. So now we need to see what kind of character uh, we've just come up with. So we're going to say if post fix and then the current um, the current array item because remember we've split it we split the string into an array. All right, so the first thing that we're doing is we are checking to see if it's numeric. Uh, otherwise, we're going to assume that it is an uh, operand, or an operator, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's say if it's a, if it's a numeric value, we're going to say result stack dot push, and then we're going to pass in the value. So we are pushing the uh, postfix value um, into the stack. All right, so the next thing we want to do is, so we've determined that it's an operator, and we want to pop the values from the stack here. All right, so we've gotten the, the topmost values from the stack the two of them. So now we're going to see what the operator actually is. If post fix i, and then we're going to say if it's a plus, we're going to do something. Uh, but in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste all of this, uh, and then we'll worry about solving the expressions. So if it's a plus, if it's a minus, If it's a multiplication symbol, if it's a division symbol, and then finally, if it's a uh, exponent symbol, which is a caret. Oops. So you can choose to add more uh, math items if you want. It's up to you. Um, you also have to take into consideration how you have to solve them. But let's go through the following here. We're going to say uh, result stack dot push, and I'm going to say parse int because uh, we can't evaluate strings because they're still in string format, but we know that they're numeric because we don't push uh, operators to the result stack. So a plus parse int b. And that'll go ahead and uh, add the sum back into the stack. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this, and I'm going to change it up a bit in a second. So in this case, um, for the subtraction, we're going to say b minus a, and we're going to change the oper operator to a minus. Uh, for the multiplication, we can leave it as a times b. For the division, we're going to say b uh, divided by a. And then the um, exponent is a little different. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say math.pal. Throw another parenthesis around that. So we're going to say b comma parse a. And that's how you would do an exponent in JavaScript. So we're almost done here. Um, outside the loop, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the stack only has one item in it now. So we're going to say if result stack dot length is greater than one, that means that there is an error. So we're going to return an error. Otherwise, we know that's good. We turn result stack dot pop. So we're popping the only item in the stack. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works. So we are going to say variable ms equals new math solver. And then we're going to say uh, console.log 
ms.solvePostFix, and we're going to pass in a string. Uh, let's go ahead and pass in the following string here. 5, 3, 6. Remember, spaces are very important because we're assuming that everything is pop properly formatted. Uh, times plus 5, 3. Division minus 7 plus. So let's go ahead and save that and see what we end up with here. We're going to open up our HTML file in a web browser. And let's look at the logs here. 29, I think that is the correct solution here. Um, should be, because what we're actually saying is uh, the following. Let me open up a new tab here. We're saying 5 plus 3 times 6 uh, minus in parentheses here, 5 divided by 3 plus 7. That's the same thing as what we have uh, pasted in here. Let me copy it so that way you can take a look at it. So yeah, uh, it's it did round. It, did, it didn't uh, give us a decimal value, but that's okay. Uh, for the most part, it gave us the correct answer. Right? And you could always modify the code to handle uh, floats rather than assuming that everything will be an integer. It's up to you. Um, and again, uh, there are probably way better ways to write this. I, I wrote this uh, with the assumption that uh, you could use it across programming languages. So there are certain things in JavaScript that you could add here to make it a little more efficient. Let's say that. Um, let's say if you wanted to use Java, uh, you could use almost the same same code here, and you'd get away with fine. Um, and this this is a good interview question as well. And again, just a, a rehash. Uh, this is how we solve postfix notation, uh, also known as reverse Polish notation.